Okay, we can start. Dear colleagues, dear friends, here at the Max Lingner House and at the screens, on behalf of the Max Lingner Foundation, I would like to welcome you to our workshop on socialist modernism in Central and Eastern Europe. We are very happy that we managed to bring you together and we can discuss as individuals or online the common responsibility of how to deal with our common socialist architectural heritage, especially, uh, especially socialist modernism, which we date from about 1955 and what is often also called as the second socialist modernism, in difference to the first avant-garde, the Soviet constructivist architecture. But before we get into that conversation, I would like to briefly explain the place where we are here. In East Berlin, there are three so-called housing estates for the intelligentsia, intelligentsiedlung, which were built in the early 1950s for the remigrants, remigrants from exile during the Nazi era, for resistance fighters and people persecuted, persecuted by the Nazi regime. The most famous returnee would have been Heinrich Mann, the brother of Thomas Mann. Heinrich was to become president of the German Acad Academy of Arts, but he died in the USA before, and, uh, before returning to Germany. The round square nearby is named after him, Heinrich Mannplatz. Here we are in the studio of the painter and press illustrator Max Lingner, who had already left Germany at the end of the 1920s and moved to Paris. There he politicized himself and worked for the left wing, worked for the left wing press, was interned after Germany's war against France, joined the resistance, resistance, and returned to East Berlin in 1949. The three intelligentsia housing estates were designed by the architect Hans Hopp, a well-known modern architect and former East Prussia. The residential buildings for the intelligentsia are moderately modern and functionally furnished. Four typified buildings were available and workrooms were added depending on the profession. So here we are in the studio of a painter. If you could take part in the guided tour of Panko tomorrow, we will also visit the studio of the sculpture uh, Rutelt Hane opposite on the other side of the street. The Intelligentsia housing estates were built before the radical turn to the building policy of the national traditions were held. After Max Lingner's death in 1959, uh, Max Lingner archive of the Academy of Arts, of which uh, Lingner was a member, was set up here and run by the artist's widow, widow. After the unification of Berlin in 1990 and later after the unification of the two art academies in Berlin, the archive was closed and the non-profit Max Lingner Foundation, which I have directed since uh, 2007, continues to run the house as a venue for events and debates. In addition, we research the work and life of Max Lingner and other artists expelled from Germany and, the, and we research the new cultural beginning after the Second World War. As regular lecture series is also dedicated to architectural history topics. So once again, you are here very welcomed. welcome. We are very pleased to organize this workshop together with Ecomos Germany and in cooperation with the Architects Association Baku from Romania and with the kindly support of the Berlin Monument Authority and the Rosa Luxemburg Foundation. Thanks you for your attention. I will pass the floor on to Tino Marga, the president of Ecomos Germany, who has just become a father again. And that's why he's sending us a message from the Netherlands, our conjugate Congratulations, and please speak to us, dear Tino Marga. Thank you very much. Okay, so just, uh, yeah, just, um, okay, so first of all, apologies for being introduced. Uh, I'm the 
reasons. Um, well, so I have no chance to be in Berlin. So, dear workshop organizers and participants in Berlin and also online, I'm very pleased to welcome you all across Germany, and I'm grateful for the initiative to organize this workshop. This is a splendid contribution to today's International Day for Monuments and Science. So my thanks go to the Max Linder Foundation, the Brandenburg University of Technology, the Berlin Monument Authority, Helle Panke, and the Hermann Hensemann Foundation. Socialist modernism in Central and Eastern Europe is not only a highly topical issue, but also follows in the tradition of a number of recent e-commerce activities. While modernist architecture is an established focus of e-commerce, we have also paid special attention to socialist modernism in recent years. Our participation in the 2022 Triennial of Modernism with its special focus on socialist modernism in Ukraine, as well as in the 2021 conference in Restauro, post-war heritage of art and architecture in Central and Eastern Europe in Kazanak, Bulgaria, are among our most recent activities. The latter conference is related to our involvement in the preparation for a conservation management plan for the Bulgarian Buslushta monument and the safeguarding of its mosaics, a project that started in 2019 in collaboration with Ecomos Bulgaria and it's, it is founded by the Getty Foundation. Previous events include the conference Iron Curtain and Green Belt, Networks and Opportunities for Cooperation in a European Border Landscape, and the 2012 Symposium between Rejection and Appropriation, the Architectural Heritage of Socialism in Central and Eastern Europe, both held in collaboration with numerous partners. These events provide new insights into the respective architecture and enable an intensive exchange between scholars, experts, and interested participants, bringing together different actors and ideally leading to future cooperation. This is important to us, which is why ECOMOS devotes a large part of its work to researching and communicating the built heritage with and between professionals and with and to the public. The architecture and urban design that we associate with socialist modernism still hold great potential for further discovery. In addition, the questions of monument value and protection strategies are highly topical. From typologized prefabricated buildings to unique architectural highlights, we encounter different levels of appreciation between generations and regions. Nostalgia and rejections are feelings that cannot be ignored when it comes to evaluating these architectural legacies of past regimes. In some regions of Europe, the relics of socialist modernism are understood as symbols of a harmonious past, while in other regions, they have recently become frightening reminders of the hauntings of Soviet imperialism. This polarization is only one of many challenges that the built relics of socialist modernism pose to us. So let's take the chance to dive into the complexity of this heritage by listening to and discussing the different perspectives we will experience during this workshop. For the three days of the workshop, I wish us all constructive talks and fruitful discussions. And I wish you a joyful and interesting trip to Cottbus, where this workshop will be linked to our current Emerging Professionals Workshop, Socialist Architecture of the GDR, focusing on Cottbus City Hall. It's a great chance to connect with fellow professionals of the next generation and an excellent opportunity to experience socialist architecture firsthand. Well, I wish you a great International Day for Monuments and Sites, and I thank you all very much for being part of this. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much to Thomas Flill and the Max Lingner Foundation and to Tino Mager and Ecomos Germany and congratulations uh, to Tino and his wife for this birthday. Um, my, my name is Jörg Haspel and I was state conservator in Berlin for many years and also president of Ecomos Germany. And so I welcome you here as a moderator and together with uh, Dr. Helmut as timekeeper. On behalf of the organizer, I would like to take you to the event of the Day of Monuments and Sites 2023, both here in the auditorium. Thank you very much for coming and on the screens outside. This International Day of Monuments and Sites was proclaimed by ECOMOS as early as 1982, 
for the 18th of April, and subsequently it was confirmed by UNESCO as a Worldwide Cultural Heritage Day. The e-commerce event thus has a certain tradition that goes back further than the Heritage Day, which is organized and initiated by the Council of Europe at the early uh, 90s. E-commerce day takes place in spring on the 18th of April. The European Heritage Day takes place in autumn. The e-commerce day of heritage is an occasion to promote also world heritage and cultural heritage also outside of Europe. And this year's World Heritage Day of Cultural Heritage features the following theme, heritage changes. That means heritage changes and is part of change and of changement. In keeping with the spirit of an open and innovative and constructive intergenerational dialogue, the International Day of Monument and Sites aims to provide showcase strategies of heritage research and heritage practices which deliver climate resilient pathways and inclusive transitions to low carbon futures. Let me start with three introducing remarks. Socialist modernism. The host and organizers of tonight's and the two upcoming evenings have taken this year the International Day of Monument Sites as an opportunity to raise a controversial issue of exceptional cultural importance and of a particular ecological urgency. The young legacy of post-war socialist modernism in Central and Eastern Europe, or perhaps we should say more precisely, the architectural legacy of the post-war period in post-socialist countries in Europe, because we do not know what is socialist architecture and socialist heritage, or not in any case. Supported by experts and colleagues from the e-commerce scientific committee of 20th century, which was founded in Moscow in 2006, and of Dokumomo, welcome to Uta Potgieser and to Ben Bushfeld and to other uh, Dokumomo colleagues here. Together with them, we want to evaluate the building heritage or the building stock of the last decades of the 20th century in the former Eastern Bloc and in the Balkans. Uh, only exceptionally and only rarely, testimonies of socialist modernism are registered in the legal monument list of the states concerned. But it is also true that quantitatively and or numerically, the buildings and structures erected between the end of the Second World War and the opening of the Iron Curtain, they make up a large part of the surviving building volume in many cities and regions of Europe, and they re represent an immense social, cultural, and economic challenge today. The way in which heritage conservation deals with evidence of industrial prefabricated constructions with mass-produced building types or standardized series of architecture made of concrete and composite building materials, the way how we deal with this may shape the future image we want to convey to the next generation about Europe's history and Europe's identity of the second half of the 20th century. From the point of energy policy and climate policy, of course, it's not just about a more or less representative selection of monuments. In a more general sense, it is about the whole issue. So it's not the question, um, do we need an exclusive concentrate of singularities? Let's say, for example, of spectacular icons of socialist brutalism, or do we need more general a representative sample of selection what was typical for the second half of the 20th century. For reasons of energy and climate policy, we cannot afford to continue the cycle of demolition and of new construction, of energy demolition or destruction uh, and of energy consumption, but we must conserve and we must use the immense building stock and the so-called gray energy which is bound up in it. For resource conserving and energy saving building policy and also for resource conserving and energy saving urban development policy, the handling of existing young buildings of mass housing constructions of the 20th century play a key role globally and regionally. And this includes the 
whole legacy of socialist modernism in Central and Eastern Europe. Second, the question of photographs. It is a special merit of photo volumes that they have attracted the attention of international experts and in a consequence also of local and national communities who awakened a new appreciation of this architecture of socialist modernism. We should recall the exhibition the catalog, for example, which was called also Socialist Modernism uh, by Roman Beciak, which was created by this Slovenian German photographer and which caused an international sensation in 2011 and offered an open-minded view of the most recent buildings and building culture in Eastern Europe. Volume CCR Cosmic Communist Constructions from the same year with spectacular buildings from the 14 former Soviet uh, republics, or the photo inventory uh, Spomenik, which Jan Kempenath from Belgium had published late modern memorial architecture from Yugoslavia one year before. And in Berlin, I would like to mention also the research and publication work which was done by Philip Moisers and Dom publishers with countless guides, monographs, and basic studies which have prepared the whole terrain of post-socialist countries. The Socialist Modernism Project, which Dumitru Rusu wants to put up for discussion as spokesman of Baku today and in the next two evenings, <coughs> can be placed in a series with these publications I mentioned. Similarly to the attractively illustrated books of Bessac, Chopin, uh, and uh, Campenas, the large format photos books by Baku and partners owe their fascinating effect, especially from the documentary power of architectural photography. I received a, a present which, uh, by, by um, Dora Ivanova of Busluja Monument, and you, if you see this, this postcard, it's really, it is fascinating to have them uh, to see. And it's a very special um, effect if you send it and if you for example, by, by post. Um, <clears throat> but the, the difference is that this um, publications, these previous publications, uh, they present architecture from an artistic point of view of an individual architectural photographer and thus they harmonize them aesthetically. The photo albums of Baku are usually the result of a teamwork. It is a joint effort by photographers, by architects, by graphic designers, researchers involved in the collection and presentation of the so socialist modern heritage. And these volumes are, so to speak, partial contributions to a kind of work in progress. They can be updated by self-publishing through expanded new editions, and they can be supplemented geographically and thematically with new release. Seen in this way, it is an open publication system with image and reading material that invites us to participate and to contribute at the same time. Last but not least, the Baku project offers the chance of multinational comparison of Europe include not only Soviet republics but the whole East Bloc uh, behind or in front of the Iron Curtain. Last remark, socialist modernism in Central and Eastern Europe. The Baku group, which is the, the Bureau of Research in Art and Urban or urbanism. This bureau and Dimitri Russo define themselves as an association for conservation and urban and cultural rehabilitation. And one of its main concerns is to improve or to raise the image of socialist building and socialist urban culture. The Socialist Modernism Research Program was initiated by Baku in 2014 to raise professional and public awareness of post-war modern buildings in Moldavia and in Romania. And special attention was always paid to the decade from 1955 to uh, 91. The first volume of Socialist Modernism um, 
series was published in 2018 on Moldova and Romania, and since then more than 10 national and regional compilations have been published, including editions from formal Yugoslavia in 2020, Bulgaria 21, and a volume on the Baltic states is scheduled for the release this summer and will be dedicated to the former Soviet republics of Lithuania, Estonia, and Latvia. These albums on the Balkan region and on the Baltic states will take the center stage today in this evening, and the volumes on Ukraine and Russia will follow tomorrow. And the final event on Thursday will close the presentation and discussion with the al album on socialist modernism in Germany, that is the former GDR and East Berlin. The Bureau of Art and Urban Research is represented tonight by Dumitru Russo. He is quasi the project's spokesman, sometimes also addressed as loudspeaker of Baku. Like the socialist heritage and socialist feminism, Dumitru is also doubted by, so to speak. He comes from Moldavia. He did his studies in architecture, his bachelor in architecture, and his master in conservation heritage in Romania. And now he is, uh, or he does his uh, doctoral thesis, he presents his doctoral thesis on heritage of socialist Soviet Republic Moldavia uh, in the capital of Moldavia. And he is one of the few members of ECOMOS who have two member cards, one of Moldavia and one of Romania. He's one of the few architects who is registered as architects in the Chamber of Architects in Moldavia and in Romania, and thus he is authorized or enabled to put building projects in both countries. And last but not least, he was elected a few weeks ago, or he was re-elected a few years ago, uh, 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 weeks ago, it, the Presidium of the International Scientific Committee of 20th Century Heritage, the ISC 20C. And for Jan Schultheis, who I recognized <laughs> in the door, the late uh, uh, Jan Schultheis, there is a special hint. He is also an, he's not only an expert in socialist modernist architecture, he is also interested and an expert in the field of military architecture and of, uh, um, of fortress uh, buildings, European uh, wide, and member of Ecofort. So we look forward to his report and to a perspective from which we otherwise in Germany hear only very little. And I'm pleased to announce, together with the main speaker of this evening, a whole series of experts from the Balkans and from the Baltic states. They have contributed to the Baku project socialist modernism, or they have expressed their interest to discuss this issue. And then they will complement the contribution of Dumitru with critical statements, possibly also challenging statements. And please join me to welcome Rin Alatalu. Please, Rin Alatalu, present yourself. She is the vice president of Ecomos International, the president of Ecomos Europe. Thank you very much. Emilia Kaleva and Aneta Vasileva, they are not here, but they are online in Zoom. They are related to us, and I hope they are still with us. They will give a comment from Sofia. Sandra Uskokovic is here from Croatia. Please, may I ask you, it's for those who are looking at the camera, she is here from Croatia. And Vidas Petrolis is also today in the evening here from Lithuania. <laughs> These three wrote the introduction or prefaces of the volumes um, will be presented. And I'm very glad that I that we succeeded in attracting also younger colleagues, so-called young professionals or emerging professionals to share with us their experience and their experience. Welcome with me, Danica Petrovic, here. She is uh, from, from uh, Serbia, from Belgrade, from Kotis. Ivanova, from and Tears. So I am very glad to be in coming together here and starting a communication which should be done internationally and transboundary 
and I found it really great in this small place of a sleeping house and would take now to do the metro. Thank you for this big introduction, your husband, and uh, thank you for uh, inviting me here to the organizers, and big thanks to your husband also. And uh, so we'll start this night with, with a small introduction in socialist modernism. After this, I will uh, present our, uh, our uh, platform website and so on. And we will uh, finish with the activity of Baku Association and I will present all the books. Uh, okay, so uh, the architecture of socialist modern of socialist period and more precisely the modernist tendencies between 1955 and 1991 as a concept are becoming more and more popular in specialist circles. In our case, Socialist Modernism is a research platform created by the BACU Association focusing on those modernist trends uh, from Central and Eastern Europe, which have been insuff insufficiently explored in the broader context of global architecture. Socialist Modernism is an approach to the architecture that was typical to the former socialist countries between 1955 and 1991. Most of it uh, left uncovered by architectural history writings. The modernist trend was officially adopted as a result of historical events. 1955 was the official moment when useless stylistical elements in architecture were abandoned by decision of the Central Committee of the Soviet Communist Party. From there on, Stalinist or realist uh, socialist architecture was replaced through the socialist bloc. This new stage must also be regarded from the perspective of the much-needed post-World War II reconstruction of the cities. Countries in the former socialist bloc suffered massive destruction of their built environment and city reconstruction was conducted in a precarious economic context, which required special economic, social and logistical strategies in order to be able to cover the necessary urban infrastructure housing, industrial buildings, and public buildings. The renew of the urban tissue, a set of economic poli policies were adopted, expressed in architecture by design blueprints and by completely different stylistic orientation. The new building design directions made it compulsory to get rid of useless stylistic elements, but also to push shapes to adorn facades by a truthful highlighting of wall parts and large panel elements. The socialist ideological rule of creating identical blueprints was adopted locally through projects that followed the canonized political guidelines while introducing certain elements to individualize buildings and to underline their modernist character. By officially renouncing useless statistical elements as required by post-1955 urban policies, architects in the Eastern Bloc found an opportunity to take architecture beyond the ideologically imposed limits. Key principles of modernism were adopted in architecture during this period. Form follows functions, the use of mass production materials, industrial aesthetics, simplicity and clarity of shapes, rejection of unnecessary detail, etc. In this way, post-Stalinist architecture become a way to recover modernism. Hence, our op option to define this trend uh, in architecture as socialist modernism. Socialist modernism is a desire to go back to pre-World War II modernism, with architecture attempting to fulfill both cultural requirements and utilitarian, uh, utilitarian and economic ones, the latter uh, having uh, priority. At the same time, the society uh, resents this type of architecture because of the policies enforced by socialist authorities. Often, this heritage is not seen for what it is, a complex of architectural objects uh, or urban ensembles, but as a result of bad policies. Central and Eastern Europe, Caucasus region, 
and Central Asia boasts a number of important architectural monuments that are representative for post-World War II identity of each country and express the aspiration of socialist year architects, starting in 1955 and ending with the fall of communism in 1991. Between 1955 uh, 1970, Central and Eastern Europe, Caucasus region, and Central Asia experienced a strong urban development. As a result, organization visible in all cities and districts, in large and medium cities, in Slava. Collective living neighborhoods divided in micro districts built during that period covered large areas and included all complementary functions health, education, culture, shopping. Very erected at that time. It was a time when, uh, when the built environment knew a sharp increase, explaining why these buildings from the large majority in many socialist cities. If these urban areas are not protected as a whole, the general image of the city will suffer. Even if we have some examples of good practice of conservation, at least and maybe promising future restoration works by the authorities, which is great. Most part of these buildings are still found today in advanced state of decay. In today's economic and political situation, there is a great risk that these buildings will disappear some of them uh, being already illegally demolished or brutally renovated, without taking into account their architectural value. Okay. On the other hand, we were able to notice that the interest of this type of architecture has increased. One way to measure is the success of socialist modernism, the platform initiated by BACU, Baku, including a website, Facebook pages, Instagram, Tumblr, Pinterest. So far, we have counted about 1 million users. The growing online trend and the, the vivid interest of platform members encourage us to extend our initiative with a database and an interactive map. Even if a large part of them are not actively involved, rather they were spectators of attracted by the obscure and abandoned edifices. On the other hand, publishing and promoting the works of that period in social media could help us save this forgotten heritage, whose in incontestable historic, aesthetic, and cultural value has uh, long been ignored. So, we have a solution. An important part of uh, in safeguarding socialist modernist heritage is played by the Socialist Modernist Initiative. Its actions are directed at rehabilitating and the conservation of buildings in Central and Eastern Europe, Caucasus, Central Asia, and other regions. Our initiative seeks the listical discipline and the involvement of both the local authorities and the civil society in the process, so as to raise awareness of the architectural value of the buildings, urban planning, and the social and cultural urban tissue still existing. We are currently working on the socialismodernist.com map and database, which are part of wider program we launched in 2013. Its long-term objectives are to protect and promote valuable architecture built in the former socialist bloc between 1955 and 1991. Its short-term objectives are to list, document, archive, and distribute information on socialist modernist heritage from Central and Eastern Europe, Caucasus, Central Asia, and other regions. The socialist modernist interactive map and smartphone applications reveal the most valuable examples of modernist architecture created in the socialist period from buildings to neighborhoods park recreation areas etc the website offers you the possibility to navigate through the map in all countries of the former socialist bloc objects are or sites are identified according to architectural artistic and urban value criteria as well as the rarity that is often exceptional they are organized by functional typologies, housing, education, research, culture, medicine, transport, leisure facilities, sports, industry, parks, and public spaces. Also monuments, which are associated with the, with the socialist modernist stylistic. The search allows selective text searches and the four <coughs> filters, country, current state, building, and function. All mo monitored objectives are uh, or sites are provided with the following names, site planning, institute, 
planning and construction period. Literature references and contributor of the research material. An experimental version of the map, version 2, is already available on our website, socialismodernism.com. We would like to turn this map into an interactive community-driven tool to help us grow our database and increase the awareness needed to preserve these buildings. We have also created a mo mobile app that allows anyone to contribute to our map. Users are able to uh, local, uh, locate sites on our map and find direction to them, add new sites they discovered, upload their own pictures made on site. The information already intro introduced in the database on a trial basis is available to experts and members of the public who have an interest to social modernist heritage. They are also invited to contribute with the information, images, and videos to the database. All, all, con all information originated outside the association will be checked and confirmed by the database admins. It must be said that we are still working on the map. That is why some of the options, such as video downloads or user forum with individual packets, are become active one by one once the map is fully operational. Furthermore, we are building a community-driven section to better coordinate the efforts made at local level and help organize our members. Anyone who is passionate about the historical period will be able to join our cause on Tumblr, Twitter, or Pinterest by posting with the hashtag uh, socialist modernist. All the important socialist modernist landmarks will be included in this platform, allowing them to be accessed by anyone interested. The Bureau for Art and Urban Research, BACU, is an association for the conservation and urban and cultural reputation. The main lines of action are to protect, preserve, and rehabilitate socialist built uh, heritage and art, more precisely to monitor the maintenance, protection, and conservation activities in Central and Eastern Europe, the Caucasus region, Central Asia, and other countries, earlier to the former socialist bloc. Beside the Preserving the historical value of the buildings, we are also striving to improve the general urban image. Uh, in the following, I will present the activity of the Baku Association in the past six years. I will also add a few projects we launched four years ago, uh, which are very important to be mentioned in this workshop. In 2017, Baku Association received from the administration of the National Cultural Fund of Romania a partial grant to publish uh, Baku's first inventory book within the editorial project named Socialist Modernism in Romania and Republic of Moldova. The photo album includes landmarks of socialist modernist architecture in Romania and the Republic of Moldova from 1955 to 1989 for Romania and 1991 for Moldova. Baku Association in introduces and explains socialist modernist tendencies it presents in color photographs a functional image of the buildings and their often original elements that synthesize local culture and tradition, while bringing us up to date with the current state of conservation. The 91 uh, landmarks included in this volume have been organized by function into five sections. The book contains the author's view on Moldova and Moldova's modernist architecture. In the following year, uh, 2018, we received a similar grant, this time from the Order of Architects of Romania, for more consistent publication, Socialist Modernist Architecture. Uh, it's, it was uh, like an experimental architectural guide. Romania and the Republic of Moldova. The 242 architectural sites included in this volume have been organized by function into eight sections. At the beginning of each section, a map shows the location of each of the buildings described. The four authors, uh, viewpoint, and assessments make this volume a surprising increase on the history of architecture. During the same period, we participated uh, in the administration of the National Cultural Fund of Romania funding session to partially obtain support for the cultural on socialist modernism in Romania and Republic of Moldova. So uh, it, it calls and it has a site, uh, romd.socialismodernist.com. The interactive map 
and smartphone application was created to assist the research of this heritage. At the same time, we opened the photo exhibition in Tidlitz Socialist Modernism in Romania and the Republic of Moldova. With the conference, we debate the issue of the acceptance and awareness in what concerns the Socialist Modernist heritage in Romania and the Republic of Moldova. With uh, Dr. Architect Irina Amandescu, uh, Dr. Architect Vasily Mitra, which was the, also uh, part, uh, partially author of the book with the text, and also the author Telephone Palace in Cluj, which I will uh, uh, mention later. Uh, Dr. Architect Tamara Nestero, which is a Baku secretary, and uh, uh, Dr. Architect Gustandra Nimitzano. Together, these efforts made by Baku hi highlight only a small part of 300 structure of the vast inventory of the socialist uh, modernist program. <coughs> Both projects, editorial and cultural, are a small part of in-depth research conducted in 2013 and 2018 in two countries and elsewhere, and part of the Socialist Modernist program initiated by BSU in 2013. In order to protect modernist buildings and monuments dated between 1955 and 1991, our initiative focused on the conservation and the proposing of buildings and the of the globe, Central Europe, Eastern Europe, and also Romania Republic of Moldova. Over the years, Baku members worked to research, identify, monitor, protect, and include in this inventory as many socialist modernist structures as possible, hoping to be able to list the most valuable of them as monuments. Then in 2019, we published two maps with two capitals of Romania and Moldova. Each map includes 26 objects divided in six or more functional sections. Research buildings, education, culture, housing, administrative buildings, transport, exhibition buildings, medical, industrial, utilitarian, and monumental art creations. Representative for the socialist modernist phenomenon and monumental art associated with modernism. Mosaics, inserts of monumental relief, and much more. All drawings were made by renowned uh, French artist Alla Russo, which, by the way, is my sister, uh, which was co opted for painting work in our editorial projects. In the final of the same year, we launched a conference debate event on new cultural projects of monumental art, Romania and Republic of Moldova. And the website is socmonumentalart.com, co-financed by the Order of Architects of Romania. The project is a small uh, portion of in-depth research conducted in 2013 and 2018 in two countries and elsewhere as part of Socialist Modernist Program and SOC Monumental Art sub sub-program initiated by Baku in 2013 and 2014 in order to protect modernist sites and art forms for, uh, uh, created between 1955 and 1991. And in addition to the modernist maps, capitals of Romania and Moldova, we published on the occasion of the project dedicated to monumental art, the maps of the same capitals with the socialist monumental art team. Each map includes 26 art monuments, objects divided into five or more sections, mosaics, murals, reliefs, fountains, sculptural forms, and others. A palpable result of our attempt to raise awareness and convince the public about the value of this heritage, our book publication, our Baku publication on modernism. The 10 inventory books entitled Socialist Modernism in Romania and Republic of Moldova includes 91 sites. Uh, it was uh, uh, published in, on 2020 and the second edition. Socialist Modernism in Germany includes 71 sites with introduction by Jörg Haspel. The book was published in 2020, also in the second edition. Socialist Modernism in former Yugoslavia includes 67 sites with an introduction by Sandra Oskokovic, and it was published also in 2020. Uh, Socialist Modernism includes 130 sites, and it was published also in 2020. Socialist Modernism in Ukraine includes uh, 67 sites with an introduction by Vitaly Shuliar. It was published in 2021. Socialist Modernism in Poland, with, uh, which includes 71 sites with an introduction by Blazesh uh, Tcharkovsky. Uh, it was published in 2021. Socialist Modernism in Bulgaria, uh, which includes 67 uh, sites with an introduction by Emilia Kaleva and Anita Vasilieva. 
it was also published in 2021. And in the beginning, uh, on 2022, actually we announced uh, the book Socialist Modernism in Russia in, in 2021 in December. But it was published uh, a few months later uh, for from obvious reasons, as you know. Uh, and uh, the introduction was made by Natalia Dushkina. Uh, Socialist Modernism in Hungary also was published in 2022. Uh, it includes 71 sites. And our freshly launched Socialist Modernism in the Caucasus with 71 sites it was published uh, this year in, uh, in February 2023. I have to mention that we will launch in the next two months the book entitled Socialist Modernism in the Baltic Countries uh, with a contribution from Laura Kierfo and Vandes Pulis, uh, which is uh, with us today here. The combined concept of photo albums and the digital guide with QR codes connected to our social interactive map and smartphone application on Apple and Google Play is an objective illustration of the socialist modernist phenomenon through a set of examples of building and architectural ensembles erected between 1955 and 1991 in the former East of countries. The materials are the results of field research uh, and of archive uh, library work performed by the Banco Association. The members of the association started documenting this trend 10 years ago and are still in the process of doing an argument. In addition to the mentioned books, we continue to publish a series of maps with the capitals of the countries uh, from the former socialist bloc. Additional Bucharest, Yerevan, Moscow, St. Petersburg, Berlin, Minsk, Warsaw, Belgrade. The thing presented, as I said, it was made by by artist Ala Russo. Al, Al, Al Tu built during the socialist regime, these edifices promoted by the Baku have been conceived in a local context that were favorable to architectural creation, inspired by pre-World War II modernism and Western modernism. In 2000, Association participated in funding session by the Order of Architects of Romania to partially obtain support for the cultural platform Socialist Realism in Romania and Republic of Moldova. Socialist Realism, that work, the interactive map was created to assist the research of this uh, Socialist Realist heritage. At the same time, it was opened at photo exhibition intended Socialist Realism in Romania and the Republic of Moldova with a conference. Together, these efforts made Baku highlights about 148 structures of this vast inventory from socialist realist project. I insisted to, to show you the project in order to somehow uh, uh, show the difference between socialist modernism and socialist realism. The project also includes an application connected to interactive socialist realism in Romania and Moldova is a part of the in-depth research in 2014 and 2020. Two countries and elsewhere and are a part of the realist program initiated by Baku in 2014 in order to protect socialist realist buildings and monuments dated between 1933 and 1955. Our initiative is focused on the conservation and repurposing of buildings and art forms in the former socialist bloc including Romania and the Republic of Moldova and other regions. Over the years, Baku members worked uh, to research, identify, monitor and protect, including its inventory, as many socialist realist structures as possible, hoping to be able to list the most valuable of them as monuments. We also submitted a, uh, a dossier for uh, Republican Stadium from Chisinau in order to be listed, but still, till day, it's not... Uh, uh, he didn't succeed. It. And in addition to the modernist maps, capitals published on the occasion of the project dedicated to socialist heritage, the maps of the Romania and Moldova capitals with socialist realist theme. Each map includes 26 socialist realist objects divided into six or more sections research buildings, education, culture, housing, administrative buildings, transport, exhibition buildings, medical, industrial, utilitarian, monumental art creation. Uh, 
uh, associated with socialist realist architecture. Socialist modernist platform invites architects, urban planners, historians, and art historians, conservationist artists, activists, and are interested in this issue to contribute and to broaden the platform. Send us any information regarding neighborhoods, buildings, monuments, park and cultural landscapes, or any relevant architectural elements. Please don't forget to specify their location and the address. All this information will be, pu will be published on our website under the name of the author. In 2016, the association initiated the classification process for, for socialist modernist buildings in Kishinev, Republic of Moldova. And in August 8, 2019, uh, the state circus uh, by architect Ala Kirichenko and Semin Shohet, building 98NR in Kishinev, became a protected monument after a decision of the National Historical Monument Committee of the Moldovan Ministry of Culture and May. In May 2022, it was included in the Historical Monuments Register, and it was voted by the Parliament of Republic of Moldova. Uh, the state circus is there, as you see. Uh, another great news is that on July 27, 2022, the National Hotel in Chisinau, by architects uh, Adolf Gorbunzov and Viktor Shalaginov, engineers uh, Skrinsky Ivenko, became a protected monument as well, is, is this building. Uh, and in 2018, for the another four objects in Romania and cities of Cluj-Napoca, Ploiești, Efuri, and North. In 2018, the Telephone Palace in Cluj, Romania, by architect Vasily Mitra, which I, uh, I tell uh, earlier that it was uh, an author of a text in our uh, architectural guide, entered the process of classification as a national monument on November 24, 2018. A committee of the Minister of Culture unanimously voted to include it in the historical monuments list. The Socialist Modernist Research Program initiated by Baku in 2014 starts to make a visible impact with the classification of the Kishinev State Circus, the National Hotel and the Cluj Telephone Palace, part of our wider aim to raise awareness for the value of socialist architecture in the second half of the 20th century. The Socialist Modernism Initiative plays an important part in safeguarding socialist heritage built between 1955 and 1991. Understanding how socialist modernism evolved in these countries by following the artistic aspect of architecture requires a good knowledge of the various historical conditions of the period, the ones that determined a certain historical evolution. Buildings and urban ensembles of the time were a result of centralizing planning, which required work in uh, large teams, socialist modernist architecture evolved differently from one country to another, depending on their particular social and political context, so that is a possible to identify local character. We are currently working on the revitalization proposal for several socialist modernist objects built in cities, municipalities of Romania and the Republic of Moldova. In the first phase of the project, we will concentrate on the analysis, research, study, followed by second phase when we will elaborate regulation and will deal with the education of local authorities and inhabitants of those protected areas through a legislative program <coughs> concerning the architectural stylistic of the buildings districts selected in socialist era. The proposal suggests the demolition of parasitic structures, prohibiting the closing of balconies, and any type of DAI abusive rehabilitation, removing excessive advertising from the facades, and finally making these buildings, neighborhoods, leisure facilities, park, etc., part of historical heritage. Thank you very much. very much uh, Dumitru for this uh, presentation and for the stuff to be discussed now. Um, I, I would like to, to mention that outside on the table you will find this uh, uh, journal on uh, what we call East-West, East 
what we visited uh, today, and for those who were not able to take it, when you're leaving the house, please take it. It's as impressive and interesting as the guided tour or not as interesting, but it is very informative, I think. And all the information you did not get this afternoon, you can find in this brochure. Um, now, we have added uh, or thought to add three interventions or statements to Dumitru's presentation, and it will be started by somebody who is not here. This is Emilia Kaleva and Aneta Vasileva. They are in Sofia. Aneta and Emilia, they have a PhD in architecture, and they are experts in heritage preservation of the 20th uh, century. They are members of ECOMOS Bulgaria and of Dokomomo International. And they are cooperating since more than six or seven years, I think, in the field of modern socialist architecture. And so they are completing each other and they are also checking each other with different uh, perspective. And this mutual work started with the PhD, which was uh, uh, some years ago and continues in their current academic work. Last but not least, I would like to mention that as architectural historians and exhibition curators, Aneta and Emilia have recently become the initiators of what they call the New Architectural Heritage Foundation, a non-profit organization to identify and to protect and promote significant Bulgarian architecture and which is focusing on the post-war heritage in Bulgaria. The foundation seeks to re-evaluate and to recontextualize the protected young heritage in a global context which is also going beyond the borders of the former Eastern Bloc. I hope, um, Emilia, you are with us and you can give the presentation of Aneta and yours. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, I'm very glad to be part of this meeting on this very special day for heritage preservation. And second, uh, I have to pass the warmest regards uh, from Aneta to all of you. She was, uh, she is sorry not being able to join us as she attends another event that is happening at the same time with this one uh, in Sofia, organized by ECOMOS Bulgaria and again dedicated to the 18th of April, the International Day of Monuments of Culture. And without any further ado, I will go straight to um, the main topic of tonight. Uh, can you please allow uh, screen sharing? Yes, it's working right now. Thank you. Can you see it clearly? In Baku photo book on Bulgaria, actually I have to switch, excuse me, right like this, okay. Uh, okay. In uh, Baku photo book on Bulgaria, right after the map, uh, follows an opening page entitled Unprotected Socialist Modernist Heritage. And one immediately wonders if there is some protected one as well. And exactly this question uh, is in the center of our a paired preface with Aneta to the book and our main thought for tonight. Actually, Bulgaria has already five protected sites from the post-war period. 
These are two socialist realist ensembles from the 1950s in our first socialist town called Dimitrovgrad and uh, three socialist monuments. The first one is in the capital of Sofia. It is called the Belt or Banner of Peace. It is dedicated to uh, the um, International Children Assembly that was started as an initiative by the daughter of the Bulgarian leader, Todor Zhivkov. The second monument is this one. Um, and it is uh, dedicated to the largely celebrated national anniversary that happened in 1981. It is called Founders of the Bulgarian State, and it is located in an eastern part of the country near our first early medieval capitals. And the third monument, of course, we all know this one, uh, it was not protected at the time of creating the photo book, but it is now. And as we all know, the most famous Kozluja monument. As you notice, there are urbanistic sites and monuments, but there are no buildings in the pure typological sense. It turns out that Bulgaria has managed to protect extremes like Buzluja, for example, but it is still far behind with protection of the broader context of the period that is needed uh, for such extremes to be fully uh, understood. As Zaneta mentions in her text, there are two socialist architectures in Bulgaria, one before and one after the death of Stalin. Both of them developed under outer influences and inner processes. And both of them are still underrepresented in the national heritage list. And this is what we believe the greatest contribution of the photo book, that it offers extensive visual material and highlights exactly the unprotected part of the Bulgarian post-war modernist heritage. One of those two socialist architectures that we have. In the book, it is exposed neutral, stripped of any ideology in its current far from glamorous condition and provoking questions and thoughts. And I will end my contribution with a recent example that shows, not surprisingly at all, that economic contradictions stand in the way of protection as much as ideological ones. What you see is a small airport, airport building, I should say, but an obvious example of pure light, white, transparent, etc., modernism, well preserved in its authentic condition, uh, but one that fails to get legal protection for quite some time now. What is more, and the city mayor that is uh, responsible for the uh, for the building uh, hurried up to give it under concession before the end of the protection procedure. And he even claimed that uh, legal protection as cultural heritage will turn the building into a mausoleum and it will prevent any future active function. Amusing, if not tragic, as an authority official statement. And our newly found foundation is seeking any possible way of promoting the unprotected Bulgarian post-war architecture. And we hope to have the opportunity to export our recent exhibition that tries to reveal the qualities of the invisible architecture of modernity in Bulgaria. Thank you for your attention. Cheers. In, in Bulgaria and also for reflecting the, the efficiency of photo albums uh, and of photography, which are pre presented, as you called it, neutralized without any ideology 
if it is not an ideology to present it in this way. So I think it's very informative. The second speaker is Sandra Uskovic. She is not with us on the screen. She is really here. She wanted to be somewhere, I think, in southeast, and it has been postponed. And now she is here because she got a scholarship of the Foundation of Partial uh, Prussian cultural heritage, and we are very glad that you are here. And maybe, Sandra, you can also answer the question. The book was called Socialist Modernism in Ex Yugoslavia, and there are six or seven post Tito countries in Ex Yugoslavia. And my question is is this book representative for all of them? Uh, well, definitely it is, but we know uh, in these uh, architectural syntheses or reviews or overviews, we always have the most representative, most iconic, and so on. So when we are talking about, let's say, Kosovo or these less developed republics of the ex Yugoslavia, then we are talking about the cutting edge architectural examples over there. Uh, but as uh, Jörg uh, mentioned at the beginning, um, actually I was thinking what to say today, um, because I presumed, but maybe I'm completely wrong, that some of you had at least have a look at the book I'm saying about ex-Yugoslavia, uh, or are familiar with the topic, at least in Central and Eastern Europe, which can be, um, how to say, uh, over, over, um, over titled in terms of the theme or topic, Cold War, Eastern, uh, Western Bloc, Collapse of uh, um, um, Communism, and so on and so on. So that's not, let's say, not new to us, not a new topic. So I wanted to provoke something different uh, outside of the box of architecture per se, uh, saying that you will probably see if you buy the book or, uh, I don't know, on the web, uh, the unique examples uh, of architecture in ex-Yugoslavia, because uh, as you may know, Yugoslavia was a uh, part of non-aligned movement in that respect didn't belong no to the West nor to the East. So for me that was a trigger today when I was thinking what to say. Uh, uh, my unfulfilled or at least postponed plan to go to Southeast Asia um, where now these, these small countries are actually organizing or uh, trying to compose, combine uh, uh, non-aligned movements in Asia uh, with respect to bipolar, of course, uh, world uh, between uh, China and United States or whatever, Russia and United States and China. So it was um, a trigger to me to go back, and some of you, uh, I, I think you definitely know people from Docomomo uh, in Asia that were very productive uh, in publishing uh, on the modernism in Southeast Asia. And um, uh, uh, therefore I chose, I certainly won't be talking about Southeast Asia, East Asia, because our topic is Central and Eastern Europe, uh, was two terms. One is m modernity and the other is modernism, which is a different thing. And like in Asia, they say, I have to quote, the history of modern architecture in, Asia, in Southeast Asia uh, is the history of how Asians have become modern. I would say the same for Yugoslavia. Uh, Yugoslavia up to Second World War II was an um, agrarian rural country, except the capitals like Belgrade, Zagreb, and so on, which were monarchies, I mean, part of the monarchies before. Uh, so um, it, is, it was this uh, modernism, socialist modernism, that brought uh, um, 
um, industrialization and more than uh, how to say more than human more than uh, man more than man in that society um, mm, what else uh, yeah also uh, the non-aligned movement of Yugoslavia at that time uh, is also had to be um, had to be uh, p um, perceived or viewed with a larger global context at that time, which was geopolitical, right? As nowadays, everything what is happening is geopolitical. Uh, I'm not trying to go to the politics, not at all. But uh, as we know, architecture is always the reflection of politics in a way. Um, furthermore, um, uh, this modernity or, uh, ex was expressed through a cosmopolitanism uh, entrepreneurship and inventive spirit. Uh, and those three, I would say, pillars, it's interesting when we talk about society, we use architectural vocabulary. He said the pillar of society is democracy, the human rights, and so on. So in that respect, like cosmopolitanism or cosmopolitan, being cosmopolitan is something that was completely erased weirdly or paradoxically after the collapse of communism, at least in uh, our former country. And to conclude, because I'm not watching on uh, my minutes, uh, yeah, uh, a very interesting chapter, which I can't, uh, I should have at least prepared some visuals, but it's easy to, to view on the net. And uh, Jorg mentioned uh, this Belgian photographer, Jan Campeners. I don't know if I pronounced it correctly. Uh, so this fabulous chapter about this alien uh, space, uh, uh, spaceships, monuments, I mean, looking like a spaceships and so on, was actually a chapter that mainly, uh, um, how to say, attracted audience towards Yugoslavian modernism because it was completely, completely different from any other Eastern European uh, uh, country uh, due to the non-aligned, but also due to the different factor of raising, erecting monuments. And that's commemorative value. It wasn't praising the generals, the battles, the victories, and so on. It was the praising or uh, commemorating the victims. And that's the, the, the major difference in approach towards those uh, monuments. I recently published, unfortunately, it's in Croatian, an article. Uh, it's called Monuments as Places of uh, big destruction uh, can also be a creative factor in a way that shows us that that absence are telling us something and what is telling us nowadays that there is no significance of uh, commemorating uh, any values whether we uh, of those times whether we want to accept it or not so maybe it's time and new values. One okay. So I'm done. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> well. <laughs> Sandra, thank you very much for your reflections about modernity and modernism. And I can, I remember that when we initiated the World Heritage nomination for the Berlin housing estates. We called it Berlin Modernity, and it was changed and altered by ECOMOS and UNESCO into modernism. And until today, I'm not clear why it has become modernism, because the German translation, which is different from modernismo or from this kind of use, and so it is a little bit uh, misleading. And may I mention that you published a book um, some year, or two years ago, I think it was, about Amanitnis. 
art dialogues in public spaces because she is very interested in public spaces, so not only in the monument, but in the relevance of public urban space and what is the role of monuments or memorials or architecture um, in this context. And it is interesting to think about, is it easier to keep it and to reactivate it if there was um, a certain temporary anamnesis which can reactivate it newly, freshly, then only to reflect what was it, it, the intention of what was the original intention for it. Thirdly, I would like to introduce Vidas Petrolis. He also wanted to be somewhere else in Canada, in the US or somewhere, but now he is here only for today and I am very happy that he is here. He is a member of Ecomos. He was uh, one of the persons who were responsible for the World Heritage Nomination dossier. Uh, of Kaunas, 1990 to 1939, the capital of inspired by the modern movement. And he is one of the initiators and authors of the digital archive on Lithuanian architectural um, history. And um, we will see what is the result of this coming book on the Baltic region <coughs> of Baku. Um, but as you were the author of the uh, of this preface and also of the nomination, I would uh, like to ask, is there a relationship between optimistic intervalism of Kaunas and the post-war socialist optimism, which is represented in the book? Uh, hello to everyone. Uh, thank you for inviting and thank you, Jor, for excellent question because uh, my idea was uh, exactly to talk about uh, this issue and um, about the issue of the relation of interwar modernism and uh, Soviet modernism. And uh, uh, from the beginning, uh, well, I will just give a few remarks because we are waiting for the book and, uh, uh, well, I hoped that uh, today I will see the book, but not now, sorry. <laughs> um, uh, but a few remarks uh, uh, which I find uh, important. Uh, uh, first of all, in Lithuania, I would say we are lucky to preserve quite a lot of uh, Soviet period uh, buildings uh, and quite a lot of uh, what we call here socialist modernism. Uh, quite a lot. Actually, I do not have exact number because uh, our uh, list of Im immovable heritage also includes uh, sculptures from the period, which uh, makes the number uh, much bigger, uh, uh, almost reaching uh, 100. But I would say it's almost uh, maybe 50 or 30 uh, uh, Soviet period uh, buildings which are already listed and protected. Uh, what is also interesting, but among uh, these buildings, we have an urban area. This is Lazdina uh, 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 Rayon in, uh, in Vilnius, and uh, I would say it's quite a challenging uh, task, but, uh, well, Lazdina uh, were uh, winners of the Lenin's Prize uh, in uh, Soviet Russia, which was quite an important recognition. So, uh, the first message that we have quite a lot uh, uh, already preserved. Uh, but the bad news probably is that uh, most, uh, if not all, of these buildings uh, actually are from Kaunas and Vilnius, which is uh, two largest cities. Uh, but we have uh, uh, architecture not only, uh, Soviet architecture not only in these two uh, uh, two cities, but all over Lithuania. So we still have a uh, have a task um, or, I don't know, a challenge uh, uh, to go uh, further. Uh, but uh, actually my first uh, and uh, the only message I really wanted uh, to point out here and uh, it relates uh, to York's uh, question, um, maybe it's my personal reflection, I would say. Uh, I, the more I see this Soviet modernism, the less I like uh, uh, this title of socialist. And uh, when it comes into Lithuania, uh, case of Lithuania, actually uh, what we do have on the list, uh, I would say, well, we have some classical socialist uh, 
modernism, as Les Dine mentioned, or maybe concrete uh, uh, example of concrete architecture in Ninth Fort Monument or Vilnius Sports Palace, uh, which probably fits into this uh, socialist modernism. Uh, but uh, when I think about uh, second half, uh, about architecture of the second half of the 20th century in Lithuania, uh, what comes into my mind is that we use quite a lot of red and yellow brick. Uh, we use plaster. Uh, we use wood, uh, which is not about uh, spectacular concrete fantasies, uh, grand scale, and what we imagine uh, when we say socialist modernism. And also, I think it's really important that uh, uh, because of the war, because of the situation with uh, Russia, uh, somehow we uh, relate this uh, second half of the 20th century with uh, a uh, well implicit political message because it was it was Soviet, but uh, this also means that uh, we do not have an opportunity to appreciate our own modernism, our own the second half of 20th century. And the more I look into these spectacular uh, concrete uh, uh, pictures, uh, uh, pictures of spectacular concrete architecture, uh, the more. I like Soviet Lithuanian architecture, or better to say, second half of the 20th century in Lithuania, uh, because of this uh, subtle scale, because of uh, wood, brick, uh, plaster, and probably because of the link with the interwar, which was precisely uh, the idea of uh, some really important uh, names uh, of. Uh, Already the second half of the 20th century, like Nasvici, Trikonauskas, uh, Dichus, we were talking that we were inspired by uh, interwar Lithuania. So I would say that uh, this uh, concept of socialist uh, in case of Lithuania, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> uh, it's still a question for me. I'm just trying to, to answer for myself. but. Uh, <laughs> uh, so that was my reflection, but uh, you will see the pictures in the book, hopefully it will come this year, so yes, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Vaidas, for this uh, reflection and intervention, and for letting open the question if there is something like socialist modernism, so we can include the next generation to discuss it, <laughs> and also the younger colleagues. So I, I would like to uh, introduce Danica Petrovic, who, who, who is from Zagreb, is studying, or was studying in uh, Cottbus at the Technical University. From, from Belgrade. <laughs> Okay, so uh, please send me all the corrections and we will um, reflect and consider it. Um, she has a master degree, was a, a part of the master degree program in architecture at the Geo uh, Cottbus and had a scholarship and the funding program uh, and postgraduate studies. And she is working together with uh, Professor Johanna Blocker, who is with us and who will host us um, together with Danica uh, on Thursday. Since uh, April last year, she has been working as a research assistant at the Chair of Architectural Conservation in the project building of the Allied occupation in Western Germany. So it is not the opposite, but it is a comparative uh, perspective which is introduced now. Uh, the heritage of democratization of Germany's built landscape. So we are very interested to benefit or to benefit from this East-West uh, experience and perspective. And Danica, you are a member of e-commerce Germany and you are one of the, you are the speaker, you are the spirit of the emerging professional groups of e-commerce Germany. So welcome here. And you have prepared a pre uh, presentation with us so we can, maybe we can uh, bring it.
Yes, good evening. First of all, thank you very much for the opportunity uh, to give me the floor to be here uh, this evening um, with you. And um, yeah, as someone who is born and raised in Belgrade, where I as well finished my bachelor studies, I'm really honored and happy that uh, out of the 70, uh, 67 sites, 25 examples of Bel Belgrade socialist modernism architecture um, have been found in um, an album on former Yugoslavia. And um, pictures are giving, these pictures are giving us a really good overview of the factor of time and temporality. And um, unfortunately for all of those examples that have been shown uh, not only in Serbia, but in former Yugoslavia, it's um, um, obvious that they're in the shape of uh, neglection and it's case above all, not on the buildings, but about the monuments. And um, as, as we already heard and we know, Yugoslavia was one of the biggest modern European experiments that went through a very fast transformation from rural area to um, urban society um, after Second World War. But we all know it's uh, unfortunate uh, and tragical ending that um, was caused by civil war, inflation, general crisis that brought to Yugoslavia this solution. And they have served <coughs> and there were uh, consequences to urban infrastructure and um, cultural uh, development of, of the countries in former Yugoslavia. And um, today, some of the people look back on this era of architecture with, and of course, with the, of this era is our historical period with resentment and others with fondness. And initiatives like these workshops and discussions, also it is very important to um, mention the exhibition Momine 2018 towards concrete utopia architecture in Yugoslavia brought awareness and contribute to the recognition of the historical and artistic importance of this heritage. Uh, but on the other side, we are uh, facing big issues um, in, in, in Serbia with neglection, with uh, illegal building extensions and uh, thermal devastations. So here are the, some uh, pictures of the very obvious uh, neglected state of the, um, this architecture in Belgrade. Uh, and also the, the big problematic uh, that is uh, going on uh, today, as already mentioned, is a consequence of the splits of Yugoslavia and high amount of people who flew away and have settled down in Belgrade. Belgrade is facing with really big pr problem of illegal building extension that are uh, also occurring due to lack of legal provisions. So here we see also the Serbian creativity um, and finding out the ways how to extend the, the, their uh, <coughs> socialist buildings. And um, also, um, as, as, was, uh, as was mentioned in the introduction session of this workshop, uh, the huge problem of thermal devastation that, um, of course, this, uh, these objects were built in uh, totally different periods uh, uh, in time, and they have to adapt to weather changes and technical and energy conditions. And uh, also implementing successful restoration project of large residential areas is everywhere a problem, not, not just only in, in Serbia. And um, what could be emphasized is that the these challenges are being uh, put in the foreground in the case of Western and Central European countries, what was unfortunately not our case. And the biggest problems that we are facing nowadays when we are talking about preservation of this heritage is, first of all, lack of knowledge, um, lack of cooperations, and also inconsistent and outdated legal provisions. Today, Serbia's laws on energy efficiency do not include legal protection, protected buildings and allow users to do whatever they want, as seen on this slide, to change their uh, appearance of their buildings uh, as how they feel. And um, 
Despite the ex existence of legal frameworks and in initiatives for the protection of the spatial, cultural, historical entity, there are big differences between legal framework on paper and um, real protection. Um, and also, as someone who is talking in the, the last, um, last part of this workshop before starting the discussion, um, I would like to, to <coughs> refer and ask for future actions that have to be undertaken in order to avoid the devastation that can overturn in today's processes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the presentation. And I have, maybe I have to apologize for the quality of the, of the projection because I, I think the, the original photographs must be even better than what you can see here. It's, it's a really a pity when we discuss about photography and about photo album that we have to look at these um, uh, photos, but maybe we will improve it um, till tomorrow. Um, now I'm very happy that I can introduce Dora Ivanova. She is something like the, the soul and the spirit of uh, the Busluca monument, which was presented here several times in the last <coughs> hour. She has a, a Bachelor of Science in Architecture at the Technical University in Berlin and the Master in Architecture also at the Technical University in Berlin. Then she worked as an architect in Berlin in different uh, ateliers and uh, bureaus, and uh, since 2019, I think you have become the manager for the emergency stabilization of the mosaics in Busluca, as well as the manager or the guiding person for the developing a conservation management plan for the preservation and reuse of the Busluca monument in Bulgaria, which was funded by the Getty Foundation, as already mentioned. She is, in, uh, she is member of the Chamber of Architects in Berlin, I learned, uh, and of Europa Nostra and of Ecomos Germany, and is one of our uh, very active um, members in the uh, National Scientific Committee on 20th Century. And she is member of the Cultural Heritage Association and Union of Bulgarian Architects. She is an expert in 20th century architecture, and she is also an expert in communication and in motivating other people uh, um, and inspiring people and in leadership and in grassroots uh, initiatives. So in training and education. And my, my question is, we, we come now back to the beginning, which was introduced by um, Emilia, the situation in Bulgaria, uh, which how is it presented in uh, Bakus or in Dumitrus? Um, album. What is for a practitioner, or for a grassroots activist, as you are, for a grassroots activist, what is the, the the benefit of such a book? What would volunteers wish? What is maybe possible to be improved, or what what do you need, and what do grassroots initiatives and civic societies and groups? What do they need? What kind of support? It's up to you. Hello, everybody. It's normally very complicated to present yourself, but um, I have brought it to a back. So this is Buzluja, if you still don't know. And uh, this is what I do. It's so, so, so easy. Um, so <laughs> and uh, thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, but what uh, York is not saying is that uh, behind this project there is a team of wonderful people and I'm so thankful to ECOMOS uh, Germany, to York Haspold himself and to Thomas Danzer who is also here, um, who have made this project possible together also with uh, the colleagues from Bulgaria, Emilia Kaliva that you saw, a very appreciated colleague um, and all the volunteers and supporters uh, that work uh, hard to make it happen. So uh, thank you really, uh, first of all, of all of you. And um, yeah, so I was asked to give a comment about the book and the wonderful work of Dumitru Russo. Um, so I think this is a visual wonder. <laughs> I think this, is, this visual wonder actually translates in nowadays language the 
um, the, the beauty and quality of this architecture. And this language is international and it crosses around uh, all those boundaries of politics, of um, ideology, of countries, of languages, because they're just visual and so easy to understand. And you can see that it's easy, but it's not easy because Dumitru has the eye and has the feeling and has the, the, the translation capacity <laughs> to, to make all this visible to, to, to the rest of us and the rest of the world. And he's making it successfully. And that's, yes, and, and that's, uh, that's really amazing. And I think this is a highly professional work, uh, first about the photographers, but also about the texts in each of the books, um, which are just on the, on the right place with the right words. Um, I can tell about the Bulgarian one, really the, the work of um, Emilia and Aneta is absolutely brilliant. And everybody who participates, but mostly Dumitru, who have given so much of himself to create such a quality product. And he doesn't have like 100 people behind his back. He's just fighting and going forward. Um, so this is really um, amazing work that you all do. And um, I think those books are super important um, because they um, support the appreciation of these buildings. And um, they highlight all those details that you normally won't maybe see or somebody who is not professional in the field won't see, but they make it really accessible for everybody. And this is already successful with your one million, is this what you said? One million users. That's amazing, one million users. Most, I mean, I, I cannot talk about Germany, but in Bulgaria, one million is like a national television. <laughs> so uh, this is really broad channel that you have created. And I don't have, any criticism for you. <laughs> what I would like is more, more and more. <laughs> and I think this is really, really powerful and it creates a trend. It create, creates um, this general interest that can grow like a snowball and can move society. So for me, looking at the Bulgarian book, it's like a it's like a guide. Okay, now it's Buzluja, and then it's the next one, and the next one, and the next one. So which are the things to do? Like, which are the next tasks? So it's a guidebook. What do we need to do in our, uh, in our architecture society and world as next? And I really hope that more people will see this with these eyes, because obviously one can do one thing uh, at the moment. Um, so I think what we really need is to reach more people and to make it sustainable, to make it really sustainable and working um, uh, in the future because I know it is very hard. And I have many ideas for you. <laughs> I think, I think because we were just talking about uh, how, how hard it is to fund it, to develop it, um, to uh, reach the people and to make this qualitative product um, function, re really. But I think it is already there for you to support you to do it in the future. So I can imagine so many different um, possibilities to monetize this. And monetizing is not in the term of just monetize it because you want to, but it's because you can make it sustainable and you can make it really uh, work reaching more people and reaching more people means really uh, <laughs> means really engaging more people uh, making more people enthusiastic and making more people s supportive and making more people fighting for this heritage working for this heritage and saving this heritage so this is why I want to propose you people can buy your book before it before it is done yeah. and very good. Then uh, you can you can you can, um, you can invite uh, donations and they get small uh, for for your, your donation. Um, not everything that you try once is worth 
think straight away. But I'm sure that you can get a lot of donations. And this can help. And there are many different ways. You can just put the names of those don uh, donors on the end page. Yes, but there, there's a lot of possibilities. Or you can, um, I mean, your channel is a star. I mean, you can use this opportunity to, um, to, for advertisement. I've told you that already. And uh, you can use this to, um, to get more supporters. So I think, um, really, I will, I, I, yes, so all those possibilities can make it easier. And I think the only comment and the only, uh, yes, uh, uh, message I want to, to leave you with is that this is amazing work. And um, I really want that it goes forward in the most sustainable way so that we can really develop it further and it can reach broader and broader public so it can inspire more preservation projects. So thank, thank you very much for this uh, plea for more books, <laughs> faster books, <laughs> um, and more photographs uh, to do it. So, um, um, Rien and I, we have decided that we want to wrap up and we are uh, here and you can ask questions or to the, of course, to the main speaker and author and editor, but also to the others or give comments here in the room. I think it's not possible from, from outside, from the, no, no. no. So, so it's, it's this inner circle, which is here in the Max Liebling uh, not Max Liebling House, Max Liebner House. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, <laughs> yes, it was translation. <laughs> it is the translation, maybe. Are there any questions or, or comments? Maybe is, is there a... Uh, um, I think it was several times it was mentioned, the question, and also you can understand or, or interpret the statement of Dora that this kind of photographing and of presenting architecture with photographs with very small informations and comments on how it was built and how it was rebuilt and restored and all these things, that this is a contribution not to for an aestheticization of architecture as well as a neutralization which allows us to, to uh, come nearer to the object, more open-minded than to know the whole history. That, that's for me, that is, that's interesting, that sometimes you have this, this kind of architecture or of photographs or of images, and they are opening a totally different perspective of architecture um, and of history than you had in mind, and that is, uh, it's a kind of uh, liberation <laughs> uh, you have there. But what do you think about the neutralization and the, the neutralization setting, um, efficiency of photographs? Is this maybe um, important to, to um, have not only research programs, but to have a, a perspective on architecture <coughs> which allows us to to see it with a new eyes, with a different view. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Okay, so I show today you, uh, two versions of the architectural guide. So one is it's like this one. Yeah. So uh, this version is more like a, a photo album, but uh, the the first one was not the first one, but the second one for the Romanian Republic of Moldova was in for this dimension, yeah, and it, it includes it uh, it included like uh, two hundred and and sixty sites, in which images were very small. So some of the bars or sympathizers uh, sent the book back because 
they wanted uh, to, uh, pictures to be bigger. So we transformed uh, the, the photo album actually in a architectural guide. It's, it's a combination between a photo album and an architectural guide. Each, each of the sites has a QR code and an address, so you can use it uh, as an architectural guide and, and visit all the, the sites uh, uh, using also the application from the App Store or Google Play. So this is the idea. The image is, imp is very important for some of the people, so they should, should see it very clear. <laughs> They just use it as an utility tool for um, for seeing these sites and knowing them better. I think. So, if someone could ask yeah. something, yeah. I just want to add, um, in terms of, um, as we are all living nowadays uh, in the age of visual communications, I mean, even uh, the emoticons and so on, uh, if you're not using it properly, uh, you can get a wrong message or you can have a problem, right? So I think it's, um, uh, it became, I mean, I I image, especially in architecture, is a very, very, um, I would say, pictorial art, um, is essential. And sometimes I even think uh, that tech, uh, Textualizing architecture or over underlying, uh, you know, theoretical aspects and so on is actually is preventing us or obscuring uh, to see the the what to say the, the the postulates or the the basics of the expression or the 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 meaning, let's say, of certain object or building and so on. Um, I always recall in my time, my time, uh, when I was <laughs> undergrad, um, we, uh, in art history, we were learning about, uh, you know, Italian painters and so on, and we didn't have books like uh, hard copies, originals, we had only Xerox, you know, black and white, and we were learning about Titian blue color. <laughs> by heart, we were imagining the Titian blue, and the first time I encountered the Titian blue <laughs> was, you know, 20 years after I graduated. Uh, but that's, I mean, the reason is because you can't understand the nation painting without truly seeing these colors. That's why I'm referring also to the, the importance of image in architecture. Maybe I can ask you, Rin, to join me okay. here, because I, I, I'm sharing uh, this duty of a timekeeper with uh, um, Dörte Helmut, and she sent me a message that we, <laughs> that we have to close. Are there any, any comments or, or questions? We, now you have the unique chance. You have all the speakers here and all the experts. Ben Buschfeld, maybe. Can you take the, the, the microphone because uh, it's not... <coughs> yes, maybe we can share this one. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I would like to continue what uh, Dora said. Thank you very much and congratulations for the multi-faceted uh, work with this, those many channels. And um, I would like to ask is there a concept how all these different channels, maps, books, website, maybe some kind of Wikipedia editing of the website, um, interweave or um, trigger each other? This is, just, this is just our work. So we are trying to transform in a way the, the mentality of the people, how they see this this heritage. So they, should, uh, they could understand that it, it should be kept and uh, researched and uh, included in the list of heritage. So this is the idea to change the people view on the on this forgotten heritage, let's say, <laughs> or ignored or so. And also the authorities, they should uh, be more uh, 
let's huh? say, inventive and see that uh, this is a, a good way to uh, to preserve this heritage. So this work is done for this uh, goal. <laughs> Maybe I can use the opportunity to invite you, Ben, to join us tomorrow and the day after tomorrow because we will continue this discussion and also the discussion how to interweave these different channels. And is it, is it a guide? Is it an inventory? Is it a photo album? Is it, a, is it an album? Is it a guide? Uh, is it too large for a guide? And all these uh, questions we can discuss and continue to discuss. Uh, tomorrow. So you are cordially invited to join us again. Rin, what is your impression today? We, we were in the Karl Marx Allee as well as in the Hansa Viertel and now we have this wonderful 10 or 11 or 12 books about socialist modernism um, in Europe. Can, can ECOMOS, ECOMOS Europe, can we um, can we benefit from this? Uh, can it be used as a basis? Because you, it is part of the ECOMOS work. It is part of the International Scientific Committee on 20th Century, where it was also uh, hosted. And the question is, is there an opportunity or is there a chance to improve and to support this issue? Because, as I said, it's unique because it's so many uh, parts which can be combined, so it's an open work in progress which can also be used not only for selling one book like the other ones did, but by completing uh, and adding uh, other values. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that was something that I was uh, thinking uh, the, the time of the excursion that um, as your ambition is to nominate uh, these areas to the World Heritage List, and uh, the wicked part of the uh, nomination is the comparative analysis. And we all tend to uh, think that we are special, but uh, once, <laughs> once we have such a comparative analysis uh, through these books, I think you are <laughs> creating yourself a big problem. And uh, because in, in a way, in, in a way you really, you have created a good, database now uh, to draw this comparative analysis, why Karl Marx Allee is better than um, Maidan or, or some other places, which have uh, similar recognitions. I really, I really liked what uh, Waida said about uh, uh, this question of socialists. Do you like the socialists or Soviets there? When uh, the better part of, uh, of uh, Lithuanian architecture as well as Estonian architecture is not uh, what is following the canons uh, of, of the regime, but what is uh, in a way similarly like interaction between the power and the creativity, like you have this uh, interaction between this Eastern side and Western side uh, situation. I th think these are really great comparisons to, to see. And um, yeah, I think uh, I'm, I'm the lucky one who uh, has had uh, Dumitru and Dora and Vaidas and also Nini Balavandishvili from Georgia to uh, speak to my students. I have organized twice the course on uh, Soviet modernism <coughs> in Estonian Academy of Arts. And it has been really, really challenging for the students to see at least the photos, but also hear the stories of, uh, of uh, the heritage from the same periods. And it's, it's very interesting to, to notice also that um, at the beginning they are usually very surprised of the aesthetics of the architecture of the same period from different regions. Not so, not so different, but we, are, uh, we have been copying Finland as much as it was possible and it is like a, a bit more Nordic and uh, more modest <coughs> in a way, uh, but to, to compare it with something that we see in southern parts of, uh, of Europe. So it's um, intriguing. And also one of the tasks of this uh, workshop has been to teach the students how to take photos of these monstrous buildings, which 
I cannot do it. I, I don't know how they fit into this camera. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's really a challenge to see that some people can do it and really photo makes miracles in, in conservation. Thank you very much. We, we often failing, we are failing in taking this kind of photographs of the objects we already knew. And I think that is one of the merits of this production of the albums, that it shows us from a perspective which is not easy to be copied or created <laughs> um, and recognized. So I, I would like to thank you very much for your interest. Thank you very much for the presentations and for the discussions. And you are cordially invited to join us tomorrow. Um, in the afternoon, we will have a guided walking tour uh, in, um, in Pankow, as Adenauer, the Western, West German Chancellor called it, uh, the government district of the 50s, including also the Intelligentsia housing estate uh, here. Uh, and in the evening, we will discuss the album on Russia or on the Russian Federation and on Ukraine, and we will can continue this. Thank you very much. Um, for, for, for